Today, at the review, the board is meant to make a very powerful power bank. Simultaneously, the board can deliver up to 280 watts of power. And that is the first selling point of this device. The second selling point is that these two Type-C ports are independent. But the second Type-C port and the USB-A port are dependent on each other. If you plug consumers into them, the consumer will receive 5 volts. The third selling point of this device is that it already has a built-in fan and also a passive cooling system in the form of an aluminum radiator glued to the board. And this board also has a small display. The first Type-C port works through the IP2366. It functions both as an input and an output. Battery charging occurs exactly through it. The second Type-C port and the USB-A port work through the IP6557, and here there is only an output. The board can operate with battery packs from two sections up to six sections. But if you want to get the maximum power from this device, i.e. 140 plus 140 watts, you must use a 6S battery pack. If 100 plus 100 watts of power is enough, you can use a 4S battery pack. Even if the battery configuration is 6S, in a discharge state when the voltage on the cells is about 3 volts, you will get 18 volts on the battery. 280 watts divided by 18 volts gives a current of 15 amps. 15 amps is a high current and the battery must be designed for such a current. If you use a lithium-ion battery pack, you absolutely need a protection board. The protection board handles a 20 amps current. Remember, lithium-ion batteries cannot be used without a protection board. The board can also be powered from any DC source. The recommended operating conditions are Input voltage not lower than 6 volts and not higher than 31 volts. However, you must keep in mind that the lower the input voltage, the lower the power you can draw from this board. The board can work with both ordinary lithium-ion batteries and lithium-iron phosphate batteries. To let the controller know which type of battery pack will be used and which configuration will be used, there are dip switches. On the board's case, you will find instructions on how to set these dip switches correctly. The switches are numbered, and according to the numbering, you can set the battery type and configuration. IP2366 is bidirectional and can charge batteries. I found a datasheet for the IP2366 only in Chinese. This controller is a buck boost. It can step the voltage down and up so it can work with a wide range of input voltages. LEDs are connected to it to show how charged the battery pack is. And IP6557 is unidirectional. It also steps down and up, and it can work with a fairly wide range of input voltages from 5 volts to 31 volts. It can also deliver PD 3.1140 watts, but we will get to the protocols a bit later. The special feature of these two chips is that they already have a UFCS protocol. This protocol is mainly used in Chinese phones such as Huawei, Oppo, Vivo, and Xiaomi. The list of phones is quite large. It is somewhat similar to power delivery, and through it you can transfer high powers. For a preliminary test, I will use a battery pack. This is a 3S7P configuration. The maximum voltage is 12.6 volts, but it can deliver a very high current. The maximum power test will be done on a 6S battery pack. The display can rotate the image. To do this, you press the far right button. The display has three screens. The screens are switched with the middle button. The first screen shows battery voltage, current, and power. The second screen shows voltage, current, power, as well as total ampere hours and watt hours, and it shows the power bank runtime. It should also show temperature, but unfortunately it does not. The third screen shows a current graph. It's time to check the protocols. I will check the protocols with a USB tester power Z. Also, remember that the Type-C cables inside have a built-in chip. If a cable is rated for a maximum power of 65 watts, it has no chip. If a cable is rated for higher power, it must have an e-marker chip inside, which tells connected devices what power the cable is rated for. This cable is rated for up to 240 watts. Check the first Type-C port. There is an Apple DCP 2.4 amps. That is the basic 5-volt protocol. There is power delivery 3.1140 watts. Quick charge 3 plus up to 12 volts and there is UFCS. Power delivery has 5 fixed profiles. 5, 9, 12, 15, 
and 20 volts. The maximum current at 20 volts is 5 amps. There are also two programmable profiles PPS from 3.3 volts to 21 volts. The maximum current is 5 amps. In the extended range there is a fixed 28 volts 5A 140 watts profile. And there is AVS programmable profile. Here the voltage can be changed from 15 to 28 volts in small steps to get a maximum power of 140 watts. Quick charge has fixed voltages 5, 9, 12 volts and programmable from 3.6 to 12 volts. UFCS can deliver up to 105 watts. UFCS is a unified fast charging protocol. It is interesting because it has dynamic power regulation. The charging power is regulated depending on the device's needs and the battery temperature, which in turn can improve charging speed and battery longevity. Now let's check what is on the second Type C. There are a few more protocols. First, there is UFCS 33 watts, quick charge 5, 9, 12 volts, FCP, SCP, AFC, the fast protocols from Huawei and Samsung. There are MediaTek Pump Express Plus and Pump Express Plus 2.0. There are basic DCP and Apple 2.4 amps. And there is power delivery 3.1140 watts. Here there are also fixed profiles 5, 9, 12, 15, 20, and 28 volts, and programmable voltage profiles PPS and AVS. Only in PPS it can output a maximum of 3 amps. On the USB-A port I found UFCS 33 watts, quick charge 3, 5, 9, 12 volts volts. FCP, SCP, AFC, SCP 25 watts, MediaTek Pump Express Plus and Plus 2.0, and the traditional DCP and Apple 2.4 amps. I assembled a battery pack on which I will run tests. The battery configuration is 6S2P, six sections in series. In each section, there are two batteries connected in parallel. I used Samsung INR18650 35E. The capacity of one cell is about 3,500 milliamp hours. But for powerful power banks, it's better to use 21,700 cells. And here I need to explain a bit. The minimum voltage on a 6S battery pack is about 18 volts. If you want to get 280 watts from it, at 280 watts you get a current of almost 16 amps. One Samsung INR18650-35E can deliver 8 amps continuously and 13 amps in short bursts. And so to get 280 watts from such a battery pack without killing the cells, you need two parallel sections and the charging current is terrible. The standard charging current for such a cell is 1.7 amps. The maximum charging current is 2 amps. Let's take 2 amps as a working value. The board can charge up to 140 watts through the first port. Dividing 140 watts by the minimum battery voltage of 18 volts gives a current of almost 8 amps. Since in each section I have two batteries in parallel, 8 amps divided by 2 is equal to 4 amps per cell. The maximum charging current for such a cell is 2 amps. Not for cycle life, it won't survive long if you charge it at such a high current. For long-term life, you should charge at 1A. Thus, for this battery pack with 6S2P, the recommended charging power is no more than 36 watts. If you make 4 rows in parallel, you can charge at 65 watts, or you can choose 21,700 cells. Among 21,700s, you will easily find a battery that can be charged at 5 amps. First test charging at 140 watts. I used a board from another 140 watts power bank for this. The test board draws 136 watts. The USB tester shows 136 watts. The battery pack receives 134 watts. The efficiency coefficient of the IP2366 is quite high about 96%. But at such charging power, the current to my battery is about 6.3 amps. That's a very high current for such a battery. So after a few minutes, for safety reasons, the power had to be reduced to 100 watts. Even at 100 watts, the battery receives a current of about 4.5 amps, which is also too much for these cells. Thanks to the aluminum radiator, the board does not overheat much. On some components, I saw temperatures below 60 degrees Celsius. After only four minutes of charging at such a high power, the fan turned on.
the battery pack is charged. Now the power bank can be loaded to full capacity. As the first consumer, I will use an electronic load a torch. With the power delivery trigger, I set 28 volts. I set the load current to 5 amps. I will connect another consumer to the first port. This is a power bank that can draw 100 watts. In total, the board can be loaded up to 240 watts. I turn on the electronic load and it draws 133 watts, and I connect the Zyme power bank. The power bank reports it draws 90 watts, but the USB tester shows 94 watts and our board shows a power of almost 260 watts. Don't be surprised by such a difference. The voltage drop across the cable at such a current is large. The radiator is warm, about 35 degrees Celsius. Give it 10 minutes in this mode. The battery now supplies about 11.5 amps. On this side, the component temperature is 46 degrees Celsius. On the other side, MOSFETs are at about 70 degrees Celsius. The radiator has warmed to 40 degrees Celsius. The batteries warmed to 40 degrees Celsius. The test can be stopped because the board really delivers 260 watts. Another test. I put the board on charge. The board now takes 97 watts from the charger. I connect a powerful 140 watts consumer to the second port. Now I'm turning off the power to the first port. The consumer still gets energy, no port restart. And I give power again. No interruption. The consumer receives continuous energy. Thus a UPS uninterruptible power supply, up to 100 watts can be made from this board. Now about pulsations. Almost 28 volts 5A and pulsations reach 150 millivolts. At 2A consumption, pulsations are about 60 millivolts. At 20 volts, they are 25 millivolts. At 15 volts, the same. At 12 volts, about 20 millivolts. And at 5 volts, not much. Second Type-C port, 28 volts 2A. 20 volts 2A, 15 volts 2A, 12 volts, 9 volts, and 5 volts. Before disassembling, I can already draw some conclusions. The board can deliver high power, but you must take good care of the battery can work as an UPS, the pulsations are small. It is universal, it can work with a very wide range of input voltages and different battery packs. It has an active and passive cooling system, so you need not worry about overheating and shutdown. The only drawback of this board is its cost. Also, there is a version without a display which will be a little cheaper. Now I'll disassemble and see what's inside. In similar boards, the fan voltage comes from the DC input. Labels on the chips on the display board are carefully wiped. The power bank board version I have is 1.6. Bidirectional chip IP2366. Unidirectional IP6557. Two identical H-bridges with the same inductances. In the H-bridges MOSFETs IP05N04A are used. Electrolytic capacitors are rated for a maximum voltage of 35 volts. The dip switch labeling isn't very convenient. It's easy to confuse, for example, 7 with 2. So when you choose the configuration, be very careful. You won't burn the board, but the charge indicator will work incorrectly. Near the DC input is a Shockey diode. MOSFETs near the Type-C outputs. An 8-bit microcontroller. I didn't find a separate Coulomb meter IC, so I wouldn't be surprised if this microcontroller obtains data from the IP2366 over the I2C bus, multiplies current by voltage, and obtains power. And that's all.